Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are, uh, Wednesday. Welcome to Come and See, God's will your podcast been, for finding uh, truth fun. in a world of good chaos. Good morning. Brought good to you by again. All for Jesus uh, Living Waters we, Ministry. Uh, with host and founder, Richard you know, Case. Uh, understand it uh, and enjoy it. Um, you know, we, we've talked yesterday about uh, processing it with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, God is listening. Uh, God is giving insight. Give it, God is giving, uh, using us to in, in, help each other have courage, excuse me, in our hearts to get to the point where we understand, okay, we have clarity what he said. Now we can say, you know, amen. Uh, so let's, let's talk about that briefly. And through your experience and my experience is that... Um, it's something that's so beautiful uh, mm -hmm. that it really has changed uh, our paradigm of praying and recognizing that there's a benefit <clears throat> to the process of talking it through. Yes, absolutely. Uh, as I express, okay, here's what I understand. Uh, here are the inf information, here's the truth. Uh, somebody else can ask a question Hey, by the way, I see this. Um, what do you know? What don't you know? Uh, all of that is is truly spectacular mm -hmm. to move us down the path of understanding God's will. Uh, it's such a, right. a such an important part to use our community and literally to uh, and this is what I help. I particularly help couples with this is. Uh, because of the busyness of life, mm -hmm. they're not talking to each other. Right. Uh, they don't take the time to process together and say, okay, we got this thing coming up or we have this th uh, thought of, of what we're trying to do. Um, how, do we, how do we do that when we don't have time to do it? So why don't we just make the best decision we can right. and hope it works? Um, and that's what you know, God had to show us and Linda and I that if you take the time to talk to each other, to process it, listen, uh, let your spouse speak her truth or his truth, mm -hmm. uh, take it further, keep going with it. Uh, one thing we found is, first of all, that brought great intimacy to us. Right. Uh, because we actually had the, the, the energy toward each other without an agenda. And that's kind of important because mm -hmm. um, I had to learn, I had particularly, this is on me. Uh, Linda was always this way, but I wasn't. I was always, hey, I think I got the answer. You know, let's go. Uh, let's go. <laughs> come on, and, and I want you to go with it. And, and do you agree with this? You know, and mm -hmm. well, not really, but okay, why not? Well, I don't really know, but I, there's something not right. Well, okay, then I'm doing it. Um, so I had to learn that, and by the way, I was very, uh, and that's one thing that God showed me was I was very disrespectful mm. uh, of Linda. Uh, I wasn't honoring the uh, her as God's creation, and I wasn't honoring the Holy Spirit within her at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I was arrogant and prideful, and and so God said, "No, you gotta, you gotta uh, learn this." He said, "Now, and this is what this is what is so beautiful, <clears throat> is that he said, <laughs> he said one." You're going to get your answers mm -hmm. from me, who knows more than you, and it's going to be best and none better. And I'm going right. to bless you with the covenant. I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. Uh, why won't you do that? You know, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm going to use unity and discussion and processing as part of the process. And okay. Uh, and then two is that with you and Linda doing it, you and your small group doing it, you and your inner circle doing it. Uh, brings you into intimacy mm -hmm. with each other. Um, and he said, what happens is that you become less judgmental. Mm -hmm. 
you become way more free, you become more accepting and open of the dialogue, not, not to give in, you, you don't lose your integrity to say, okay, whatever you want, Linda, I'll do, so that'll make it easy. Nope, you both process through mm-hmm. uh, until you do. We're, we're gonna have a couple tomorrow. Uh, uh, that uh, Mike and Sarah, and they're, they talked about uh, a situation uh, which you'll be able to share. We encourage you to, to listen to it. Yeah, uh, a young in, couple, another sure. young couple. We've had uh, Joshua uh, and Emily, and now we have uh, Mike and Sarah, uh, young couples. Uh, actually, you, you are kind of related to both of them because they're, <laughs> they're ones you're your son and they're just in your small group. Uh, is good friends, yeah. Uh, really good friends. Or they're not, she's not in your small group, right? No, no. We know each other from years back with children's ministry, but Dan and Mike are in C12 together. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so you have yeah. an intimacy with that. But uh, there's a situation that she described where um, Mike came to me and, and there was something he wanted me to consider. And she said, my first reaction is no, mm-hmm. too expensive. But because there's a heart to seek God's will, because why? Well, right. God, God knows the answer even though my inclination is, eh, not really. We talk, went to neutrality, uh, and Mike, and this is what um, I, I saw that I had to do, he had to provide safety for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, look, I think it's a good idea. God told me to do it. I'm gonna do it, let's go, come on. He just said, well, I'm gonna relax and let God and bring let it about. God be God. Let God yeah. bring it about. And he says, and you could see it, as a result, the two of them, the affection for each other, mm-hmm. you know, they're six years married, is is wonderful to see. It is. It is. Uh, and that's and that's and what refreshing. happened. That's what happened to Linda and I. So that <clears throat> as you process this, what happens is you lose the sense of well, they're not doing exactly what God wants them to do, and I think I know better. And mm-hmm. then you bring judgment into it. You should. You should. Mm. You should. What happens as you start to learn this is that all that all just goes away. Yeah. Uh, you don't even have a thought of judgment. It's just like, well, yeah, you got something to say, say it. I may, right. I may disagree with you, um, uh, I'm, and, and I, I'm not there yet, and I have a different view, and you have a different view, but that's okay. Uh, and it creates a safe space to process. It does, It yeah. really, it is really cool. Yeah. Um, I'll share just an example um, of a fail on this front. And sometimes, so Rich is describing times when, um, you know, there are times when you're, you're making a decision and you're in two different places. And so it could be contention, or you can learn to step back and let the Holy Spirit lead and bring you to unity. Sometimes it's not even that it's a contentious decision that's going on so much as different personality types are playing in and that sort of thing. So I'm going to take you back to um, Dan, you guys have all met Dan, or many of you have, if you saw him on the podcast that we had him on and, um, we have a super, super sweet relationship, but we are both people pleasers. <laughs> um, and, and we truly love to spoil each other, um, which can be a great thing. And it can actually work against, against us mm. as well. And in this particular situation, Um, You know, I know yesterday, Rich, you were talking about the importance of not just unity with each other, but unity with the Holy Spirit. And um, there was a situation where Dan had been, um, had had his eyes on, you know, how he loves sound. Um, He had these, this speaker system that he was just so excited that he wanted to get for the family room that you know, would would be great for music too, which I do love music, but great for music, um, really good for movies and TVs and whatever. And it was a high end um, speaker system, and and it's a presence. I mean, when I say it's a presence in a room, it's not two tiny little speakers. <laughs> you kind of have to decorate around yeah. Yeah. this this system. It is it is two large panels, and you know, okay. Anyway, um, all of this. Christmas is coming but up. You can put ornaments there are, on it. <laughs> there, exactly. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It looks like it could be a tree, but um, Dan does so much for the rest of our family, and he is just—he's generous to a fault. Sometimes he really does just love to spoil us, and um, and so when he asks for something and has something on his heart, it's really hard for me to say no. Mm-hmm. Um, and to a fault that 
what I realized, so he was talking about wanting this and, and making this expenditure and we're like, okay, do we have the money? Yep. Have the money. Let's do it. And so we were in unity with each other. However, we never stepped back and actually asked God, is this how you want us to do? We both had a piece about it. We're both the old, yeah, it's something you really want. Me being me, because the people pleaser too, because he does so much for us. Like I said, if he wants something, I'm like, oh my goodness, let's, yeah, you need to get it. Cause, because, you know, you deserve some happy, some play too, whatever. And so, you know, this, this monstrosity of a speaker system is in my family room as we sit here right now, I should sometime take the computer down and show you all. Um, but anyway, it is there. Um, but fast forward, we get the system. We're enjoying the system. You know, he really is enjoying the system, whatever he comes home from work one day. And I've got my worship music blaring on it. And so the house is just filled with music. And he looks at me and he's like, oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying it too. Okay. So here's what I heard in them. Immediately, he said that with a smile and the Holy Spirit prompted my heart. And he said, did you see, I want you to pay attention to this moment because it's not that I would have even said no to this. The two of you didn't consult me on it. And by not consulting me, you stole the, the fullness of the joy for Dan in it. Mm. Wow. Because we didn't say, okay, we both agree, but let's go ask God what he has to say. And then if we had gotten that stamp of approval right there, then the fullness of the joy and the freedom that Dan would have had to fully enjoy it and know it was also bringing me joy. It wasn't just for him. Right, right, right. By not taking that step, the Holy Spirit told me I really had robbed him of that. Yeah, yeah. And so it was a lesson we learned, you know, it wasn't a contentious thing. It was out of the goodness of our hearts. We were in agreement, yet we still hadn't, we had come to agreement together and not with the Holy Spirit and adding that extra, let's make sure that this is what God wants us to do would have given us freedom that he wouldn't have sat for several months wondering, did she just do this only to make me happy? Right, right, right. And yeah. I had stolen that joy from him just from not processing. So there's a, there's a unity fail for you yeah. that yeah. we learned from. And God showed us, you know, even in, even in things like that, it is worth going to unity, not just with each other, but with the Holy spirit. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful story. Um, uh, and as we uh, actually, we're going to look at uh, a story with David that it that kind of implies this, what you just said uh, about unity and how it works. Uh, uh, David, uh, again, the context here is uh, David was promised you're going to be king. Mm -hmm. uh, because of what happened with his victory over Goliath, he was brought into Saul's inner circle. Uh, and because of his bravery, uh, by the way, he married uh, Saul's daughter. Uh, then he, uh, Saul said, I'm going to put you in charge of uh, regiments and go to battle because mm -hmm. uh, you have a bravery about you. You have a, you, you had God's, God's with you and I want to uh, experience that too. So he does. Uh, well, pretty soon he's super successful. Uh, and people say David uh, gains victory over tens of thousands and Saul, he gains victory too, but he only does small things, thousands. <laughs> uh, and that made Saul jealous, which was one of his pro bit. one of his problems uh, <laughs> that he never actually uh, uh, followed God mm -hmm. and, and had a heart for it. He did all kinds of things uh, wrong, including here. He didn't. If he would have understood it, he would have said, "Hallelujah, mm -hmm. uh, David, keep doing that, and I'll serve. I'll serve God because uh, I am. I am the king." <laughs> you know. So right. Uh, so he decides that uh, he's a threat. By the mm -hmm. way, uh, because of what Samuel had or uh, Saul had already done uh, by violating uh, the process of, of being uh, faithful to God, Samuel has told him he's going to be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he sees David and said, uh oh, that's the guy that's going to replace me. So I'm going to get rid of him. So he uh, he's uh, at a literally at a banquet and he throws the spear at him and basically tells his men to go chase him down and kill him. Mm -hmm. So David flees. Uh, well, uh, David flees. Uh, he's winding up 
uh, south of Jerusalem is a kind of a desert area called En Gedi. It's where the Dead Sea is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's where he uh, uh, wound up. And um, he's uh, just going from cave to cave to cave because he's getting chased by Saul. Right. He gets very discouraged. He writes, uh, by the way, you can, you can read this discouragement in Psalm 142, which again is the mm -hmm. authenticity of our heart. And he said, basically, he says this, <laughs> I thought you, were, mm -hmm. you said I'm going to be king. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm experiencing the complete opposite of that. I'm not king. I don't have anybody. I'm all by myself. I'm going from I'm cave to cave. I'm hiding in caves. <laughs> cave, hide the cave. And I'm mad, you know, and I'm upset. Mm -hmm. How come? What's going on here? Come on. And God uh, speaks to him and says, okay, let, let me show you. Uh, so he winds up in this cave. <laughs> so what God does is, first of all, and this, by the way, is the beauty of community. He sends his family mm -hmm. to go and be with him. Mm. Okay, now, again, think about how amazing this is. Uh, they don't have cell phones. <laughs> right. Um, they don't know where he's at. They know he's out there. Yeah, so, God led them to. So they literally got to go cave to cave to cave until they uh, lined up with him. But they spent the time. We're going to go and, and be there. Okay, now they're there. Um, and David says, oh, great. At least I got some people around me uh, that I can mm -hmm. process. Uh, and they basically say, you know, trust God, stay with God, it'll be good. Um, then uh, people uh, start to discover that David's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, what we call the, the down and outers, mm -hmm. never been a warrior, never been in the army, not educated, uh, in debt, uh, all kinds of problems. They start finding out that David's down there. And so they said, well, let's go down there too. Mm -hmm. So over a few months, now his family's still there, by the way, over a few months, he winds up with 400 men. And, mm -hmm. um, and he's questioning, okay, uh, God, what about me being king? And God says... Well, the next step, the next piece of instruction, the, the promise still, still holds. Mm -hmm. The next step is you train these 400 down and outers who know nothing about war. Mm. And you head them up. They're your new uh, this force. army. This army. Okay. Your, your new people that you're going to be, quote, head over. And David, with, through the encouragement of his family, okay, got it. Uh, I, I got that. Um, and by the way, uh, we read in Matthew 25, he who is faithful in small things, mm -hmm. I'll give you a greater authority over other things. Uh, and so he's basically saying to David, are you going to be faithful to a small, what you consider to be a small thing? Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, it'll, it'll get you there. Okay, so he does. Uh, then he's training him up and he winds up uh, uh, in uh, Moab and um, he's back into a town. Uh, and Moab is a little bit outside Israel. So he's, he's there and he's with the, the mayor, the king of the, of the area, and says, could I stay here and my family stay with me until I know God's will? Mm -hmm. that, it says that right in the Bible. Uh, yeah, sure. And he knew something about community is I need them to help confirm God's will, mm. which, which they do. Uh, it comes in and then uh, through, through their will, it says, okay, now get ready. You can go. You got to go back out into the wilderness. Saul's going to chase you around, but don't worry, I'll protect you. That's my mm -hmm. will. So he let his family go. Okay, I, thank you for helping me confirm that. Uh, I go. Okay, now, so they're out being chased around by uh, Saul to kill him all. Okay. Um, David's got these 400 men, and they're just going from cave to cave to cave, living in, and you can imagine, uh, and I've actually been there. It's filthy, dirty, full of bugs, hot, not a tree in sight. Uh, if you could picture one of the most unpleasant ways of living, it would be that. And they're mm -hmm. living they're living that. Okay, now we come to this story of Kayla. Uh, go ahead and read uh, 1 Samuel 23, 1 to 13. Now they told David, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Kayla and are robbing the threshing fl floors. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, shall I go and attack these Philistines? 
And the Lord said to David, go and attack the Philistines and save Caleb. But David's men said to him, behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Cala against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord again, and the Lord answered him, arise, go down to Cala, for I will give the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Cala and fought with the Philistines and brought away their livestock and struck them with a great blow. So David saved the inhabitants of Cala. When Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, had fled to David, had fled to David to Cala, he had come down with an ephod in his hand. Now it was told Saul that now it was told Saul that David had come to Cala, and Saul said, God has given him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And Saul summoned all the people to war to go down to Cala to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was plotting harm against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Cala to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Cala surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, the God of Israel, please tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then David said, will the men of Cala surrender me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will surrender you. Then David and his men, who were about 600, arose and departed Cala, and they went wherever they could go. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Cala, he gave up the expedition. Yeah. So, um, again, they're, they're just going about their everyday life in the caves. And uh, David hears that uh, this, this little town, Cala, is getting attacked by the Philistines. So, again, uh, and this is indicative of how it works. Um, now, David wasn't expecting that. He wasn't saying, uh, okay, what exactly do you want me to do? He reacted to a new p information, to new situation. Mm -hmm. Is, hey, I've noticed this. What do you have to say to me about that? Right. Uh, and, and at the moment, he didn't say, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go rescue him. Or, well, because we're, we're being chased around by Saul and we're not big enough to beat the Philistines anyway, uh, mm -hmm. we'll just, it's nice or, you know, tough that they are, but nothing we can do about it. See, he goes, right. and, and this is what you, you tried to describe before with, with Dan is, well, why don't you go to God and say, well, what do you have to say about this? Right. Um, and God says to him, yes, I want you to go down and go to Kayla and fight the Philistines. Mm -hmm. David said, I got it. Goes to his men. Hey, man. God says we're supposed to go to Kayla and fight the Philistines. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the men, what do they say? No, no way. we're scared here. Yeah, what what like, do you think we're going to do there? <laughs> like that doesn't make sense to us because mm -hmm. we're, first of all, we're not big enough to beat them. And two, uh, we actually haven't been to war at all yet. We've been we've been practicing war, but we're, we haven't right. been to war. And you're going to take us against the Philistines, and then two is Saul's after us, going to kill us, and put us in jeopardy. So none of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, with that, this and this is important. Uh, think of what David could have done at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so let's not go. Right. You could have said, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Uh, let's not go. Or he could have said, well, God said, and mm -hmm. I don't care what you guys want. We're going. Mm -hmm. See, both of those would have been equally uh, not of God. Mm. Okay, now in a way, think about why. Why would they equally not be of God? even though David had heard God. Because the unity had not come through the Holy Spirit on the rest of it yet. He wasn't trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And he's now, interesting enough, yeah, I heard that, but now I exercise it in the flesh. Right. I've decided. I'm not willing to go any further. I've decided we're going, let's go, and I don't care what you have to say. Okay, now I can mm -hmm. tell you one thing. 
uh, <laughs> I deal with a lot of couples. That's exactly how they operate. Mm -hmm. Well, and honestly, remember when we had Josh and Emily on, um, they were sharing about how, how God, a lot of times will hold from telling Josh something he'll tell Emily beforehand, because knowing Joshua's personality, right, right. if he tells him first, then he's more likely to just go That's it. and, and they're learning God's teaching them how to come to unity and, and is protecting them through that process. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right. Um, so what does David do? He said, okay, that's okay. Um, it's all right that you don't agree. Um, I appreciate what you've said. Let us mm -hmm. go back to God and get confirmation together. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, did God mind them doing that? No. No, it was critical. They're seeking his will. They're yeah. seeking, you know, together it's when your spouse disagrees, when your uh, friend disagrees, um, I have a different viewpoint. Hey, no, I, that's too risky for me. No, I see it differently. No, it's okay. Uh, let's go back to God. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's together know, because David did understand something. If you really said that, you'll tell all of us. Mm -hmm. And we'll get it. Um, and so, okay, uh, man, are you willing to do that? Yes, we are. We have a heart for that. Let's go, let's go do that. So... Hey, Linda, do you have a heart to do that? Yes. Hey, Rich, do you have a heart to do that? Uh, does it matter that you disagree? And in a, in a way, see, the answer is it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is one thing I need to help everybody understand. Even if I'm in the flesh, mm -hmm. I'm afraid of something because, and I'm looking at it in the flesh. And that's the reason why I can't say yes. Mm -hmm. Linda had seen, know something. Well, that doesn't matter. I don't need to evaluate and say to you, hey, Rich, you're in the flesh, and that's the reason you're not getting it. And uh, as soon as you stop being in the flesh, you'll, you'll get the answer. It's, well, do you have a heart to, to seek God? Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where the disagreement is coming from because if we have a heart to get to unity, he'll get us there. Right. Uh, and by the way, it does require that. So that when Linda and I have a disagreement about stuff and she says, no, I don't see it that way, or I'll say I don't see it that way. We don't worry about it. We're not blaming. We're not saying you should or shouldn't. It's just, okay, uh, do you have a heart to go to neutrality? Are you neutral? And that's usually mm -hmm. the first question. And a lot of times, nah, not really. Okay, well then go to neutral. Um, and what we say is we just don't yet know God's will. Mm -hmm. So we can live with the disagreement. Uh, it's not going to ruin our night, not going to ruin our weekend, right. not going to ruin our week. Uh, we don't agree. Uh, We've got to maintain integrity, by the way, until we get unity with the Spirit. And He uses both of you. And, but the key is uh, don't decide on your own. Well, I know and you need to follow me. No, it's mm -hmm. uh, even if you think you know. Uh, go to God. And, and David basically said, hey, God, could you re reiterate it? Maybe I didn't hear you right. You know, what do you have to say about this? He says to the men and to David, yes, I want you to go to Kayla, uh, fight the Philistines. And by the way, I'm going to defeat them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do, I'm going to be the one defeating them. Okay, great. Fantastic. And they all said, we got it. We're in unity with the Holy Spirit. Let's go. Mm -hmm. They go. They win the battle. They defeat Philistines. They chase them out. Um, and now they've saved the town. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, Kayla is a... Uh, uh, was a city that was kind of built into a mountain. So the only way in and out of it was a one single gate. Right. Um, and you couldn't just escape any other way. You had to come in and out through the gate. Uh, uh, so now they're in Kayla. Uh, and think about the difference between <laughs> living in Kayla and living in caves. Mm -hmm. uh, they're back uh, enjoying... Uh, you know, uh, life again. They're light. They're enjoying right. games, beds, uh, food, fellowship. Uh, they're back to living normally. Some sense of normalcy. Yeah. Uh, and they're having a great time. And as far as they were, they're concerned. They, their will would be what to stay there. Right. Let's just stay here. Uh, we'll, we know we'll get another assignment, but 
hey, God, by the way, when you provide the next assignment, could we just go from city to city to city? Because <laughs> <laughs> this isn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Um, well, Saul finds out uh, mm -hmm. and says, great, I got him. Actually, Saul says, God's delivered him to me. So you can see deception, by the way, mm. how that works. Oh, that's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, God gave them to me. Uh, no, he didn't. Um, and so Saul's deceived attributing something to God that was of the enemy. Mm. And that's what deception is all about. So it's a little, little interesting insight there. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go get him. Uh, and he gets an army of, of several thousand. Go, go get him. By the way, he's, if he gets him, he's gonna, gonna win because there, there's only uh, at this time they have six hundred. Right. So um, David uh, hears about it, you know, and again, mm -hmm. uh, God alerts him. Hey, he's coming. Okay, now at that moment, again, what could David have done? See, it's, it's, it's called presumption. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, well, uh, God said he's going to protect me. So I'll just trust that. And whatever happens with Saul coming, yeah, God will just take care of it. Or, mm -hmm. um, hey, I beat Goliath, so I can, I can win against Saul. Or, hey, we just beat the Philistines. Of course we can stay here. Right. Uh, Hey, these guys are going to help out. Yeah, let's just stay here and trust God. And I see, I hear and really, that. Go ahead. Yeah, a lot of that is even just our tendency to put God in a box. Yeah. However, He functioned last time is how He will function again. Right. Right. And, and, and so we don't yeah, press in and ask. Yeah, Go and they have that, and they have a false. See, there's a false sense of, well, I'm trusting God. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens, happens. And God said, well, right. if you're going to trust me, you're going to have to find my will. Uh, right. And so David goes to God and says, uh, we, got an, we got an issue here. I got something new that just happened. I understand it. Um, could you give us some insight here? And what's your will? Number one, is Saul coming? Mm -hmm. Okay, even though he thought and heard and understood that he was coming, he knew that God knew the answer to that. Right. If the answer is no, he's done. And fantastic. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. We they don't have just to just relax and enjoy. You, have, you can exactly. relax. He's not actually coming, or I'm going to divert him, or nope, he's not coming. No problem. God said, yes, he's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I stay here, mm -hmm. are the men of Kayla going to hand me over to Saul? And, mm -hmm. we're, and we're toast. God said, yes, they will. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, then uh, what would you have us do? We got to leave. You mean we got to go back to caves? Yep. We don't want to go back. I know you don't want to go back to caves. My will is in this case, you're not going to fight. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be saved. You will lose this battle. Your right. action based on my will is for you to go. Right. And flee this situation. And he'll stop chasing you if you flee. But if you stay, you're going to get killed. Right. Okay. So uh, something you said there, I just want to highlight um, when we're trusting, you know, you talked about sometimes we think, well, God said he'd protect me. Therefore I'm just going to trust him with that. And we stop there and we don't ask answers and presume of how he's going to protect what you just described there. His answering as David processed with the questions and, and God gave him specifics that is how he protected him. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we miss that sometimes when we just put the blanket trust on there. I think that's an important thing to bring up. A lot of times trusting God is questioning further. That's right. That's right. It's not, you know, we, we think trusting is hands off. It's all up to you. And trusting is trusting. Okay. Yes, there's a promise, but I don't know how you're bringing it yet. So I'm going to keep asking and you keep leading. Yeah. And, and it's the, uh, uh, remember, trust is faith in what God speaks. Yes. His will. So that, you know, Jehoshaphat is another example where, he, you know, he was going to be defeated by this uh, massive army against him. He said, I know, you can read this. This is in uh, mm -hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 20. He says, I know you've spoken covenant. Mm -hmm. You're going to bless us. You're going to protect us. Uh, we will not be defeated. I know that. Right. I, I, I see that. But... <laughs> Uh, we got a problem here. Mm -hmm. So within that promise, what specifically do you have to say about this? And I need to, I'm going to trust that 
not right? the broad, pro not the gross promise. Right. And then say, well, I trust God. God said covenant, so I'll just do nothing. Yeah. No, and I God. think we do get stuck there sometimes. That's right. Uh, and then he yeah. gave him the answer and said, no, the battle's not yours. Go out there and go to battle and, and you'll see what's going to happen. So he says to David, uh, no, you got to leave. I know that's not your preference, but that's my will. I am protecting you. This is the way I'm protecting mm -hmm. you. In this scenario, there's not going to be a battle. You got to go back to the caves. Uh, okay. And he leaves. Because uh, he understood already. Because remember, he's, we, we talked about him being a man after God's own heart. Mm hmm and yeah. will do all of God's will. Now we know he's not perfect at it, but um, he had a heart. If God spoke it, mm -hmm. well, I know that's best and none better. I'm gonna, we're gonna do that over me fighting God and saying, well, yeah, but I'd, I'd rather mm -hmm. do this. He said, I got it. Okay, so he leaves. All right, so uh, the key to this, as we look at it, he left. Mm -hmm. Saul called out the expedition never got to Kayla. The men of Kayla never handed him over. Right. All right. Um, well, how did God know that that was going to be the outcome since it actually never even came to a point of even possible to ha happen? How did God know that? Because God is God. He yeah. sees around the corner. <laughs> yeah, see, and he knows what would have happened. Yes. If he did not interfere and David chose to do otherwise. Yeah, and see, this is the, this is the uh, capability of the God mm -hmm. that we follow is that um, it was all potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he, and, and what the way I characterize it with the technology that we understand is um, we, can, we can view things, play a game in what's called virtual reality. Mm -hmm. We could play something out uh, you can play a, a battle or a fight or something in your virtual reality. It didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. You're just having an image of it happening. Right. Uh, and God has that power to basically play out virtual reality. Hmm. So that yeah. basically, David, if you stay here, Saul is going to come. The men, even though you think they shouldn't because you just saved them, it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to you that they would do this, but they're going to hand you over to Saul. Right. I see that. It never happened. Mm -hmm. But I know what will happen if. And then, now think about the beauty of that. <laughs> God says, your, your choice that you're about ready to make, I can see the consequence of that. Mm -hmm. If I was you, which is what I've learned, hey, son, if I was you, <laughs> I would follow me. Because the choice that you would like to make is actually not going to work out for you too well. Mm -hmm. I see that. I know that. By the way, it's going to happen that way. Oh, why don't mm. you follow my way, which I know doesn't make sense to you. Okay. Uh, and you learn it, that all the things that we've been talking about uh, with processing it through, going to unity, seeking God at every level, not going to presumption. It's mm -hmm. not, okay, now that I'm here, I've just stay here and relax. He said, well... You got another decision to make next. Are mm -hmm. you going to check in? Are you going to check in? Keep checking in. Don't presume. Don't, don't go to the gross uh, promise. Uh, walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. And, uh, and so uh, this story is so beautiful because it really gives a microcosm of this is really how uh, it works. David illustrated perfectly how to discover God's will. Mm -hmm. Go to unity. Don't worry about disagreement. Keep going until you get it. Let me fulfill it. Ask me, well, now what? Now what? And I'll tell you mm -hmm. and be willing to follow because I know more than you. Right. Uh, it's a great example. Yeah. So it's a, it's a beautiful story. So um, as we, uh, you know, conclude this, this little piece of it, because uh, we're going to move next into the steps of obedience uh, and what does mm. that look like? We'll, go, we'll look into that next week. Uh, that God is, is saying, my will is specific. I need you to be in a uh, ask, seek, knock mode, listen, watch, wait, uh, trust the process. Let me give it to you specifically. I'm working a bigger story. Uh, I'm working all sides of the deal. Keep asking me. Don't presume anything. Don't worry about disagreement. Go to unity. Bring your counselors around you. Uh, enjoy. In other words, enjoy the walk. 
Yes. Because I'm going to deliver to you fantastic life. It's very unique, very specific to you. Trust it. Start to practice it. And when you do, it'll happen for you. And this is what's going to happen to you. Around you are mm -hmm. going to be people who say, how did that work for you? Well, I learned this. And they're going to say, can I learn that? And you're going to say, right. yeah, let me, let me help you learn it. This is how, that's how our, our ministry uh, has multiplied. It all, started, it all started with just Linda and I saying, well, this is what happened to us. Mm -hmm. And they started experiencing it. And then they told people and they told people and they told people. And they, because people and are God interest, interested. God is glorified in incredible ways through people, it. Yeah. People would like to know what is God's mm -hmm. will. Yeah. And we've just described to you, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic, it's unique, it's specific, and God says, I'll get it to you, have a heart, let's go. Uh, mm. So, so uh, it, we just have such a beautiful God that loves us, and you and I get to experience it all the time, and we're having the time of our life, and does that mean we're absent of trouble? No. Nope. Uh, as things happen, are they difficult? Yep. God says, don't worry, I can, I can manage this, I can mm -hmm. handle this, I can resolve it, you know, so... Uh, and again, each point is an invitation just to intimacy with him and to deepening our relationship and learning to trust him further. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and to know that he's God and he's God. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, why would we not go with him? So Absolutely. again, if you've got questions, you know, put it up on the YouTube comments or uh, questions at afjministry.com, questions at afjministry.com. Uh, we really invite you to, uh, you can get as specific as you want um, and we'll deal with it. And uh Hold, hold things confidential, but we'd love to assist you. And we, we, it, it, Kathy, in my heart is, if if we could, we would like every believer in the world mm. to experience this because it'll turn literally Absolutely. the world upside down, and the joy that's going to come is is mm -hmm. remarkable. And the marriages are going to be thriving, and your businesses are going to uh, know truth and. It's going to be a beautiful thing. So we, we just encourage you to do that and send, send your questions in. And so, Kathy, we'll uh, pick this up again uh, next week uh, as we get into uh, uh, the specifics of obedience. And then tomorrow uh, we have Mike and Sarah. And, yes, uh, you guys will definitely want to uh, tune in for Mike and Sarah. Uh, you'll see he a, has you'll a see beautiful just salvation story, an, too. An enthousi enthusiastic uh, couple that have mm -hmm. learned what it means to follow God and they're having the time of their life and that'll be fun for you to learn and then particularly when, when you don't agree. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Friday, we'll, we'll pick it up again with uh, End Times Friday. Yes. And uh, we're gonna get into more, more depth of uh, the beast and the Antichrist and uh, we're at a, at a fun place there too. So. Get into some interesting stuff, yep. right? Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for joining us, guys. We are looking forward to continuing this journey with you. Tune in tomorrow and have a great afternoon. Yep. See you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.